and we are live. I am. Oh, I gotta comb my hair. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm R.J. Ogren, artist, author, actor, and all-around crazy person. How? Are... <coughs> There's a good start. Um, time to have some coffee. <coughs> Maybe I should start over. <laughs> oh, you got to see my mug. That's from Disney University. And actually, I did teach some art at uh, Disney University at the branch at Walt Disney World. Back when I was an artist at Walt Disney World. Hi, everybody. It's so good to be back. I have a new laptop, which I'm breaking in today. Hi, Brian and Sanya and Scott. Michael, oh, everybody's jumping in there. We've got five <laughs> and Robin. <laughs> and you can see what I'm working on. And uh, yes, I, as a lot of you know, I went to broadcast last week uh, and I had our, our good friend, Jim Martin, a fellow actor and a fellow artist. And uh, he was going to be on the show. We had everything all set. He had brought he brought his puppets, and everything just went wacko because he had already left the drive here. And I found out that my uh, camera wouldn't come on on my laptop that I had. And the laptop was a few years old, so um, we finally decided that it wasn't worth trying to get it fixed. We said to heck with it, and. Um, I just got a new one. No, I didn't buy the top of the line. <laughs> so I hope this isn't too fragmented. I, I see myself just kind of like <clears throat> doing weird things. It, well, actually, that, that's how my face really works. Um, and <laughs> I'm in subdued light. Um, I've, got the, I've got the set so you can see it in black light and regular light. So anyway. Oh, hi, Robin, uh, Jennifer, Gigi, everybody's jumping in. Let me turn this out for a minute and see what this looks like. Yeah, see, it's, well, a little more black light there. And, oh, you can still see me. Wow. Okay. Um, it's, so it's been a, a, a hectic time. I went for my final checkup yesterday at the v, uh, VA hospital in Chicago here, uh, Heinz VA, and to check my eyes. And they said my eyes are fantastic. Yay! And I didn't have to wear glasses. If I wanted, I could just wear readers. Um, but I do have a slight stigmatism in the right eye. They, they were not able to correct. And uh, I went ahead and asked for uh, prescription glasses, which I'll get soon. Um, uh, because when I'm painting, my eyes are moving all over the place. And with astigmatism, the one in my left eye is totally gone. But with astigmatism, it just kind of throws everything off just a little bit. So uh, here we are. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should start filming on YouTube. <laughs> I hope this is working well. <laughs> okay. Now, but I, I'll bring this up a couple times. Uh, Jim Martin, who, like I said, was supposed to be on last week, will be on uh, next Friday. And he's bringing the puppets that he makes, some of them. And uh, his craziness, well, it'll be a lot of fun because he's uh, as nutsy probably more than I am. <laughs> so that'll make it fun. I am going to paint on this uh, apple here. And this painting is actually, it's uh, the, the big uh, vat here of poison, which um, you can't see the bottom. Wait a minute here. You can see the there's the bottom edge. Yeah, you'll see some of the black of the big kettle. I guess it is, and uh, and then of course I'll I'll do some shading and highlighting and everything. But today, and I've been working on her hand, but today I'm going to actually do some painting and shading on the apple right here. And does this does this look good? And somebody tell me on here. Am I uh, coming across okay? Because I don't know if it's because of the low light 
I know that's always been crazy for me. But uh, anyway, <laughs> I hope this is working. Um, so anyway, Jim will be on next Friday for sure. Yay. And um, also, I did post a question on Disney Fun and Games, uh, the group site, uh, for you to have some fun with over the next few days. A uh, fairly simple question. So go on there and take a look at it and uh, see if you can guess at it. And I'll mention it next week when I talk about it here. Um, also, you can go to uh, Suzanne, my wife, Suzanne's blog, which is srogren.blogspot.com. And she has information on the uh, uh, little contest we're having for a subtitle for our uh, third co-authored Disney book. Uh, be third and last one in the series and uh, we'll be done with that by the end of August is our target date and also we spoke uh, just last week too at the Kiwanis Club here in Aurora and had about uh, 60 people there it was really nice it was a lot of fun and it was it was pretty neat because usually when Suzanne and I do these um, we get a lot of people that uh, seem to want to know more about the what I did uh, and this time, all the questions were directed towards Suzanne about costumes and being a character and what it was like. And I thought that was great. So I, after we talked and got questions, I pretty much stood around and just listened. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, anyway. So why don't I uh, do a little bit of painting here? And let's see, we are still on. Yes, okay. Hello. Hello, Sanya. <laughs> okay. Did everybody take a long weekend? Uh, I mean, is everybody still on a, like, what, a five-day holiday? Because I know fireworks are still going off every night. Now, see, that fragments on the picture. It's, that's strange. Okay. I'm going to get my brushes. I'm going to try not to move very fast. and see if we can do a little bit of painting now yeah what i've got here is two shades of red in black light paint uh, and it's mixed in with regular uh red acrylic paint and this is this is actually a, a water-based acrylic black light paint that i have from blick so, you know, if this if this picture is fragmenting as much as I'm seeing right now while I'm broadcasting, um, maybe I do need to get a camera and do it on YouTube and then just, I don't know. I just have so much fun doing it here like this. So anyway, um, I'm going to take the brighter red and... I know it doesn't show much right now because it's already, this is the same color that's in here, this red, uh, but I'm going to take a little bit of black, that's regular black, there's no black light black, and uh, put a little bit of shade, because the, what I'm doing here is um, fixing this so that it shows a shadow from the, the poison dripping off of the apple. And it gives it a much more 3D effect. Yeah. There you go. So, oh, hi, Rick and, and Bill. Glad you could join in. And <clears throat> so I'm going to do the same thing here. Oh, I know what I want to do. <laughs> I can't reach. I can't reach my water. <laughs> I forgot to put it over here. That's all right. I'll just switch brushes. I can do that. I'm going to put a little bit of highlight right in the center. In other words, I'm going to use a little bit of white. 
Now you can see that pretty good at the moment, but I'm going to blend that in some. It just gives it a little bit more of a spooky look. A spooky look. So, I would do the nose. Now I'm, I'm going to show you the apple from uh, the actual apple that I have from Snow White's Scary Adventure. That was at Walt Disney World. I'll get it here in just a second. <laughs> All right. Get a little more red. And there. And again, a little bit of white to highlight that in there just a fraction there there we go hey looking good right no nope. yes all right um oh yes hi <laughs> well, a whole bunch of you are jump uh, jumping jumping in here jumping in here and uh wait don't don't go away. I'm going to grab my water. No, I am not drinking the water. I'm getting my, for cleaning brushes. I think I showed you all this before. This is one of only two pots I made on a potter's wheel at the University of Miami. Oh, I was terrible on the potter's wheel. This, this thing is easily a half, maybe three quarter inches thick. <laughs> so it weighs a lot. So it works really well for using for water. But at least I can put it on the floor right there. And it's really nice here. Uh, uh, after that heat wave, which was terrible, and we were so glad we got our air conditioning fixed. Um, but uh, I don't know if you all know the story of that. Um, the warranty company, which we're not going to use anymore. They sent this guy out from this company that was one of the ones that they send out from a company they they uh, use. All right, it was uh, air air conditioning and heating company, and the guy came out and said it was going to cost fifteen hundred dollars uh, because it had messed up our condenser uh, inside the house. Um, and that was where the blower motor is and everything else inside that blows the cool air to the rest of the house and um, he even pumped more freon he went outside to our air conditioner and pumped more freon into the thing and he says ah it's not going to work it's going to cost fifteen hundred dollars and he, <laughs> so we said oh nay nay because the, the the warranty company said we're not going to pay that uh in the meantime we had paid seventy five dollars for this guy to come out and tell us this then we called the uh, gentleman who we bought the house from and who's also a contractor and had refurbished this entire home. And he sent his guy out, it's an electrician, and the guy looked at it and he says, no, it's just your uh, control panel in your blower unit that sends the, he says, the air conditioning's coming in and it's just not getting to that throughout the house. I said, so what will that cost us? He says, uh, about a, 185 for the new uh, control panel, and uh, only 75 bucks for me to put it in. Big difference. And he came back the next morning, uh, just before the real heat wave hit, and he put it in in like 20 minutes, and our air was up and running. So, well, that was a good picture. The minute I moved like that just then. So anyway. Um, that's what happened with our air. And this is the first day today that we've been able to open the house up. Although right now, even though I've got the windows open, I've got the shades down and pushed against the windows so they won't blow 
so you can see this in black light and it's getting warm in here um <laughs> so if anybody has a question um no i don't want to end this live video go away um <laughs> Uh, it's one of those weeks. I'm always having one of those weeks. Now let me uh, let me continue with the with the red because this is really neat because I'm going to do the the drops down here and oh and I want to show you this was the last apple that I had put in for the witch to hold in Snow White's Scary Adventure um, in late '79 early 1980 and uh there's a story there in um, what on our first book uh, together in a dream there's a, a very funny story about how i tried to outsmart the guests and the and the uh employees who kept stealing the apples from the witch this is the witch this is the one she held over the vat oh look i can put it right there when i just attach it <laughs> and of course it glows in the black light and it um so when I left, because of the, the events that had surrounded this apple, uh, they put a new apple in and gave me this apple uh, as one of my going away gifts. And so I've had it ever since. And we, we, we rather than have the, the eyes red seen through the, uh, and the nose where you're seeing through the, the stuff pouring over the face here, or over the face, over the uh, apple, uh, we painted it black because you saw it for only a, a you know a few seconds when you went by the witch and we wanted maximum impact and uh contrast so that's why we did that so any any oh here i can so I'll, I'll paint again just hang on i already got the eyes and nose it's going pretty quick um so this has and you can see the hook there's an eye hook that's screwed into the top of this apple and I you can and I'm going to compress this you can see how this presses in just slightly this was uh we buy these by the box full these apples that were fake fruit that people would use instead of uh heavy ceramic fruit or anything else but it um, was perfect so we then painted it with uh black light paint and uh, made it look like this. We painted it in our dark room in our studio behind Small World. <laughs> and uh, then we put a ribbon, or actually ribbon, a piece of yarn, which actually glows in the black light around that. And we had a piece of yarn coming up that was actually um, up to her fingers. <laughs> I can see it right behind her, right behind Nan there. You can kind of see how it worked. Oh, there you go. And anyway, uh, but we also had a wire, which was actually what held it. There was a wire. Um, uh, if you're familiar, well, the back of paintings have uh, the, the wire they use for hanging paintings. It was the same kind of wire. So it was good, strong stuff. We had it in here around this eye hook and it went up to her fingers and there was a, between her fingers right here, there was a, um, a bolt going through there and we attached it to that if you couldn't see it the guests couldn't see it and then of course the yarn went up around that wire and that's what it looked like she was holding you didn't see the wire at all well the the problem was people could take this and this was like this and they yanked down on this apple and it would pop off uh, the eye hook would stay, but the apple would come off. And oh, I guess every couple months we were having to replace apples. So I got the bright idea that I would try to outsmart everybody. So I had the maintenance uh, animation shop make give me a, an eye bolt or, or make an eye bolt that went all the way through the apple and came down to the bottom here and then gave me a round metal plate that capped it off so you couldn't pull the that through the apple and it, it, that was great it worked great uh we hooked it back up put it in and we thought we were fine and then a couple of weeks later we get a call from uh the uh 
one of the leads, uh, an assistant supervisor, um, saying that the apple was missing. What? So we went uh, up and looked at it, and of course it was gone. And um, so were her two fingers. Her thumb and her index finger went with the apple. It didn't pull off. The apple didn't pull off. It just managed to break. And this was solid fiberglass on this, this hand right here. Um, and it goes solid up to about here. And then it was fiberglass form for her body, uh, but hollow. All right. So <laughs> I thought I can outsmart them. So I made another apple put it back on the wire, except I made the wire longer. And I, this is great, I've actually got this to point to. <laughs> and I made the wire go up here and then I wrapped it around her finger and came around here and wrapped it around her wrist and, and coiled it together and tied it off real tight. Thinking, well, they're not gonna be able to take the apple now because it's not going anywhere and they're not gonna be able to break her fingers. Well, about two weeks later, we get a call and they said, well, not only is the apple missing, so is her hand. <laughs> Some numbskull had managed to just yank the entire hand off and made off with it. And uh, of course, the other three artists, Lee, Tom and Jane are saying, just give up and just we'll just make the apples because we can make them pretty quick. I went, no, 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 I'm going to try one more time. And so I did it again. And I took it a longer wire, went all the way up her. Now I had painted the wire you before, and again I painted the wire. You the flesh colors and stuff. You couldn't see it in the attraction at all. And I took the wire all the way up her arm, and up and around her shoulder, and made it really tight. And of course, then her black cloak covered that part of it. Well, that seemed to be fine for a few weeks until we got a call and. And Lee gets the, answers the phone and he goes, RJ, I went, what is for you? He had this big smile on his face. I went, what? And I took the phone. It was the supervisor. And he said, we closed down the attraction. What happened? Well, the apple's gone. I said, yeah. <laughs> and so is her entire arm. <laughs> so <laughs> we go up there. And, of course, they got the work lights on and it's not running. And and the and her whole cloak is just hanging down crazy i says well just leave it like that you can run the attraction and i will have to make a new arm and a new apple and we'll go back to the old apple with just the eye hook in the top and that's it so <laughs> i went back and painted like about 25 apples which i think lasted for for another two years or so before they said they had to paint anymore. Uh, yeah, one of the uh, many crazy stories in, uh, and I think in that same chapter is also uh, where is Dopey's head? So if you want to find out, get, get our book together in a dream. You can get it on Amazon and it's through Theme Park Press, the story of the apple. So, um, Love the view you picked for the painting. Oh, great. Thank you, uh, Tracy. Um, and glad all is well. Yes, I am too. Now, let me look real quick, see if there's any other things here that uh, anybody's asking me. Cauldron, cauldron. That's what I was trying to call it. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, I, I'm, getting, I'm getting older. I'm, I'm, you know, 41 now. So I I start talking and I can't remember what something is called. I'm going like uh, the um, <laughs> oh hi Pam <laughs> Pam Turlo <laughs> she was on the show um, some months back and she's going to be on again. We have to work that out and uh, and oh Pam we're coming to your party too. Don't show up at our house this week. It's not now. <laughs> Oh, it isn't fragmenting. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad to hear that, um, that it's not doing that. It's just it's just the playback I'm getting. Um, hi, Christine. <laughs> how, are how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, it looks great. Thank you. Oh, that's all these nice comments. Uh, when you took it down, did they offer you anything else? 
Um, well, I that's well. This wasn't an attraction. They they gave me a Mickey Mouse ring. Maybe I should hold it this way, a Mickey Mouse ring, um, which I've worn ever since. So I've had this ring for thirty eight years. I think that's right. Um, and uh, of course, I have the hands and feet that um, the Mickey Mouse. Uh, character walked around in in the park at Disney World. Of course, you all know that Suzanne was in characters, and I was friends with all the people in the character department, even after Suzanne went on to other uh, uh, management positions in entertainment. But her, uh, but I used those hands and feet. They were being discarded and would have been thrown out. Uh, but I used them when I was making the uh, prototype figure of Jiminy Cricket. And that was for uh, one of the uh, people from the character department were called a zoo crew uh, to come to our studio, put that on, put the hands and feet on, and put the the head that I had made, the prototype head and hat of Jiminy Cricket, so they could see how it looked and how it moved. Because the hands and feet would be the same as Mickey Mouse. I just painted the the uh, the shoes in a uh, golden yellow color. I have had, I painted them back black. Now I. I course still have those and um so okay i hope i didn't miss anybody there stop that <laughs> but you know i hope that didn't pop up on your screen oh look at that friends uh, <laughs> uh I, oh, I was working i was setting things up on this laptop and for you have joined just joined of course i uh, this is a new laptop i got yay uh and uh, and i was doing something with uh, my my uh you know my home page and everything else and i hit one, one thing all of a sudden everything was in black and white <laughs> it took about 10 minutes to figure out what i had done but it's it's fine it's working now well okay so i'm going to go back to painting some more Make sure my brushes didn't get stiff. And uh, if you if you've just joined, um, again, um, I just was at the VA yesterday. The hospital. Uh, my eyes check out great. Although I am going to uh, my my left eye is twenty twenty, and it had a horrible stigmatism in it. But it's totally great. My right eye, unknowns to me, had developed astigmatism is very slight but it's just enough to bother me uh when i'm painting and uh when i'm reading a lot but especially when i'm painting so um i will have to get glasses so they gave me a prescription yesterday and i picked out the glasses they have a, a place right there at the va and uh, and i get glasses for free frames and glasses nice only thing is they said it takes six to eight weeks to get here and now you're all going to go, what? All the VA hospitals have um, eyeglass centers. And they, of course, they have all their, their uh, doctors and everything. They take care of your eyes. But when they order, when you order the glasses, when they order the, the prescription for you and you pick out their glass frames, it goes to only one manufacturer from all over the world here in the States. So you're at the years goes to the end of the line when i send it in and actually it's when i've gotten glasses before it's only taken like three or four weeks but anyway okay rj um shut up and paint ah, my eyes are going weird um okay what i'm doing is putting another level of this red which is a mix of uh, acrylic black light red and regular acrylic red okay you can't well you could but it have to take a while <laughs> you need to mix some colors together to get the color you want uh you can with wildfire paint and if i was painting out wood it's a much stronger thicker paint uh than this is for the canvas uh, but it does work great but I still have to mix them uh, together to get it to cover well and to get the, the right color red that I want. And I'm going to take a little bit of black again and do a little bit of that shading. Chris.
creepy, huh? <laughs> okay. Don't mind that guy bending over. <laughs> I had nowhere to put the, the water container. Um, okay, I'm going to tone this down just a little bit on this one. There we go. Okay. On to the next. So I'll do this here, and then I'm going to do the green. And the green will have a little bit of uh, dark shading in it, but most of it will be highlight. I'm going to go all the way across. There we go. And the crazy thing is when you're working in black light and you have black, and I have a black tray, <laughs> I can't see the black paint. It's like, where is it? It's in there somewhere. Um, which... Which when you when I've done haunted houses over the years in black light 3D, which if actually if I were to put the 3D glasses on that I have, uh, there are actually digitized clear glasses made for this um, because I've not put any red into the screen. What would happen is the red would look like it's a foot and a half out from the picture, and the green would be level with the with the painting, and the blue tones here would be a about a foot deeper. So it's a great 3D effect, except to paint something like this, I'd actually have to mix the green with red in it and tone the red down to get them to be at the same level. It's, a, it's uh, easy to do. Uh, and we go down below on some of these, there we go. <laughs> I feel like it's Halloween here. You should you should go over uh, to uh, Disney Fun and Games and look at the uh, trivia RJ's trivia question I I put on, and uh, <laughs> you're gonna go what? <laughs> that's that's goofy. That's easy. But there's another funny story there. Hey, all right. Now it's like, ooh, now I'm scaring myself. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Let's see if I can reach down without disappearing from the picture here. And let's see, Alex and Libby, uh, of course, Alex is. Our grand, our oldest grandson, he's 22, and uh, his girlfriend Libby live with us uh, while they're uh, paying off some bills and saving up to get their own place. And we're glad to have them here. And they are uh, actually they just went to the zoo. We have a zoo here in Aurora, and Aurora is the second oldest city in the state of Illinois, and it's the second largest city in the state of Illinois, and um, a lot of history. Um, in this town and uh, we have a zoo that actually we can walk to. Um, it's about three quarters of a mile away from our house and uh, it has some exotic animals there. They don't have elephants and giraffes and stuff, but they do have, they do have some llamas. They have two, two, I believe, gorgeous full grown white wolves and they are just and, and they seem to always be out too they're absolutely beautiful and um so if you ever come to aurora <laughs> go to our zoo uh you know they have they have uh all kinds of exotic birds they have some really neat uh, large turtles uh that you can get close to it's neat it's really nice um they have alligators hey so, okay, now, I I have, this is a green that I mixed. Uh, this is green black light paint and um, some permanent green uh, regular acrylic paint. And then I took some of that and put it into another container and I added some um, black light yellow and some regular yellow and some black light white and regular titanium white it's it's my highlight so 
I'm going to start with that because I want to give this a nice highlight on top here. And you'll see why in a second. This is a very thin paint, this black light paint, as opposed to the wildfire paint, which is for painting on um, surfaces like, like wood and uh, primed metal, etc. You can't use the wildfire paint uh, just, I mean, you could use it on canvas, but there's too much tendency for, for it to eventually crack when it dries. No, oh, excuse me. And now I'm using the darker, the, the regular green, the shade that I started with on this apple. Yeah, you can see that highlight. Okay, good. So I'll come down here. Okay. And go right above the bridge of the nose with the darker shade. Now we're doing on time. I haven't, oh, 36 minutes ago I started. So, okay. Now I had painted a little bit of this in here earlier. It'll come down and I'm going to blend it into that, the darker green, the light green and dark green together right here. Now I'll put some over on this side. Yeah, I'm painting over some of the uh, yarn here, but that's okay. I know where it goes. It's just easier than uh, to just paint over it again when I'm done. Besides, it's that's just a that right now that that thread is uh, just titanium white on there. That's not black light. And uh, when I do paint it, I will paint it with a mix of black light, white, and titanium. Look how much brighter that is. Woohoo! That's that really glows. As a matter of fact, well, no, let me do this first and I'll show you how that thread will look. But I gotta get some of this on here and blend it in. This is the darker shade again. Now, I'll take the dark. Again, this is the main color, it's not the highlight green. Right above the eye, I'm going to take a little bit of black. Oh, don't want too much. And we have a subtle little eyebrow ridge to it. Do the same thing over the other eye. Might make that a little bit darker. Let's see. A little bit wider too. Yeah, I love painting in black light. It's it's fun. Ooh -hoo. Yeah. Um and then I'm going to actually do I think I'm gonna do this just above the nose too. Ridge of the nose. That's just the base green color and first I'm going to do a little bit of a highlight oops not with the white Ooh, well, too much okay um, a little bit right here a 
Well, that's just, that's all I need. And then I can go down to the, under the eyes, right here. I'm gonna show you that thread here in a minute, but I want you to see this. Okay, back to the highlight. And it's those nice little highlights and touches that make it look more real. because I'm not doing this. Uh, this is like a cross between real and cartoonish. Uh, and her her index finger and her thumb are, are finished. And um, so you can see how I'll shade the rest of the other fingers and the hand going back. I've done the back side of the hand. Uh, I'll tell you a little funny secret here. <laughs> that... Um, I created a sketch of this and um, I wanted to get it just right. And actually, um, two things I used. That is my hand. <laughs> I have, I have a, a little mirror that I was able to, you know, put in front of me and use my left hand uh, to Let's see if I can get my hand the right way. See, see, when I, when I see it, it's that way. Of course, in the reflection, it's the reverse. So in any way, <laughs> it made it the right hand. Uh, but just to get the, the layout of it. And then, of course, then I made the, the knuckles and the hand and all thing much bonier. I hope my hand doesn't really look like that. <laughs> so uh, maybe it does. Now. Um, let's see what else we got on here, if anything. Oh, we're, oh wait a minute. Somebody, I'm going to answer some questions here. Don't go away. Hi, Lynn. Hi, John, Jen, Larry, everybody. Oh, Topher. Oh, thank you for the thumbs up. When they look at down, did they offer you anything? Oh, no, no. That was, well, you asked that question. No. Oh, okay. When they took the apple down. Okay. Sorry. Duh. <laughs> Kate, like the like the uh, laughing faces with the. <laughs> okay, um, do I have any cool Pinocchio stories from the ride? Unfortunately, no, because uh, I worked at Walt Disney World uh, with three other artists working on the attractions, and <clears throat> I would have loved it for us to have um, a Pinocchio ride. But we didn't. They only had it at Disneyland. And uh, I've written on it, but I don't have any cool stories, sad to say. Oh, well. Oh, Tracy, I mystified as to why no one spotted the guy who grabbed the apple plus hand plus shoulder hard to write and hide half a mannequin. Great question. <laughs> I didn't tell you. Okay. Now. When they stole the apples, of course, they could stick it in their shirt or whatever. And when they get off the ride, they get off, uh, as you know, before it usually goes. There's usually not a, a, a guest hostess or host standing there where you get off. Sometimes there are. But it's easy to hide the apple. The hand, the, the we don't know if it was a guy or a girl who took it. But uh, when they took the whole hand and the apple, they managed to get away with it. Now, the arm was a different story. And while we were in the attraction talking with the supervisor uh, of Fantasyland and, uh, and one of the leads, and we we're looking at the witch with her total arm missing, um, in regular light, we had the work lights on, which looks very weird in black light rides. And uh, his, he gets a call on his phone. On his, well, not his, we didn't have cell phones then. He got a call on his radio. Uh, it turned out it was security uh, from the main gate at the Magic Kingdom, uh, questioning if uh, we might be missing something from the attraction because they found a guy trying to walk out the main gate with the witch's arm 
with the hand, of course, and the apple attached to it, swinging off the end of it. Now, when he ripped the arm off, okay. <laughs> to do this, the guy, it was a guy, young guy, he had to jump out of his car. Now, when you do, that stops the ride because you step on mats and stuff and there's, and, it, and everything stops. So when you're in an attraction and it stops, that's usually somebody has gotten out of a car or is jumping back in or whatever, or at, at load and unload, they've had to stop to help somebody get on who's, who's maybe uh, 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 handicapped in some way. So anyway, he jumped out and did it so fast, he just yanked on it and twisted. And when he did that, it, it just ripped, it shredded the fiberglass up at the shoulder. And he managed to yank it out, jump back in the car before one of the hosts or hosts, one of the hosts came running into the ride because they'll go right up to, they know which car it is. And they ran up to the two guys, they said, and, you know, told them, what were you doing? Nothing. You know, well, don't get out of the car. OK, we won't. Well, they hid the arm between them in such a way that, that and, in, and it was still in the dark, in the black light. So she couldn't see what they had. And when they got off of the attraction, they well, how they got off of the car, they managed to hide it. They got all the way to the main gate. And that's when they got caught. And the guy was trying to tell security that he bought this in, in the Emporium or one of the shops. No. Um, not only will he never, or has probably never been allowed to come back to Disney, but he was then uh, taken by security. He was arrested and taken to the jail cells. Uh, or cell <laughs> above Main Street. When you're walking down Main Street toward the castle, it's on the second floor. There's a jail up there, and that's where he was put. And then the uh, Orange County sheriffs came and uh, took him, took all the info and everything on him, and took him to the Orange County Sheriff's Department where he was booked. And he got in a lot of trouble. That was that's the most I knew of it. So that's that's actually what happened. Um, oh, James had to leave, come back later. No glasses on, you had your eyes worked on, it turned out great. Yes, uh, Sanya, uh, for those of you who joined later, uh, I, I think I told you, my eyes are great. Uh, I still am gonna have to wear glasses because of the slight stigmatism in the right eye and it does bother me uh, when I'm painting, but, but I am able to paint for a little while without it being too bad. Uh, let me see, has anybody else asked? I love how you, how it looks alive. Woohoo! every day is Halloween. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what it feels like when I'm in the black light of time. Uh, that was quite the story, yes. And that's, Suzanne and I, when we write these books together, we, which we have to, we write alternating chapters. Uh, how I got the job, First is a monorail pilot at Disney is the first chapter in the first book, Together in a Dream. Totally bizarre how I got the job. Even more bizarre was six weeks later when I when the opening came up for a fourth artist to re, actually to replace Leota, uh, who was going back to the Hollywood studios, and how I went through five weeks of interviews with, uh, with and there were 13 other artists trying for this job. And the sixth week is when they finally let me know I got the job. And it was what I found out that I had done that was different and actually tied into what I'd be doing at Disney. And it was a really crappy job I had had in a couple of years prior before I got on with Disney. So it's a, it's a funny story. And then my chapters, um, I'll take you inside the attractions or in our studio or whatever, uh, or, or scuba diving in 20,000 leagues under the sea. And there was always something funny happening. Um, so, hey, that's <laughs> fun times. Um, are we, oh, Jamie, are we close uh, to the secondary title yet? Yeah, the subtitle of our, uh, book, um, Imagination and Dreams are, are Forever, which is the title of our third book that we're working on. Um, we've got, I think about 25 people have submitted ideas for the subtitle. And 
So if you if you all you're watching and want to take part in it, message me with a, your subtitle idea. It can't be too long, but it has to convey what basically the book is about. Um, so anyway, um, and we've gotten some good ones, uh, some quite a few good ones. So it's going to be uh, real interesting to decide. It'll be between us and the publisher what we come up with, who's we select. Uh, Oh, Tina, hi, from England. Yes, hi. Um, I've read Together in a Dream and a Design of Fear book, and they are fantastic. Oh, thank you so much. Um, if you haven't, go on uh, Amazon, please, and write a review on both books. It'd be totally appreciated. And any of you others, if you've read our books, please, please, please go on and take them. It can just be one sentence. It can just be a few words. Uh, it does help uh, with our books. And, and Matthew Wright. Hi, Matthew. <laughs> You're coming on at the end. Let's see, I've got like nine minutes. I gotta paint this, this highlight on here right now. Wait a minute. I wanna do this on the, uh, on the drippings coming down. So I, that was, <laughs> didn't look like it did anything, but that was the base color. And now I'm gonna put in the highlight. I'm not, I did it less as it came back. I didn't put one over here on the side, but I've got more there, a little more here. Because basically in this painting, the light's going straight at and down a little bit on this whole scene, rather than coming from the left or right. Um, I'll do these last two. Okay, and yes, Matt. Hi, Matt. We're coming to Ohio to see you guys. Woo! -hoo. In a couple of weeks, a few weeks. So just you all know, in a few weeks, I'll let you know ahead of time. I won't be on. <laughs> we'll be in Ohio, and we'll be seeing a play. Yay. Um, okay, uh, like I mentioned, I wanna make sure I bring this up again. Um, Jim Martin, uh, a fantastic artist who for 21 years has designed the uh, McDonald's uh, Happy Meals toys. <laughs> so he has great stories about that. He also uh, has done scenic art work with me on some of my plays. He He's a great scenic artist. Uh, he's a great artist. He's a, a fabulous cartoonist. And um, he and he's done a lot of puppets uh, for shows. And he's going to bring the puppets. He's going to bring them back because he had them all here uh, last week when I couldn't do the show. Uh, Tina, I can't believe what people use to pinch off the rides. I would not dream of pinching anything, especially off a ride. Uh, neither would I. I mean, as much as we all like the stuff, you can go to jail. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so not a good idea. The uh, that's why when you know, and you know, when you're in, when you're in a restaurant. It's one of the fast food places at Disney, and you go to pick up the the lamp or a candelabra or something. And it's it's bolted to the table for a good reason. Uh, even funnier in uh, Carousel of Progress because that's a story about the thousand uh, dollar sandwich that I had to make, uh, which was uh, bacon, lettuce, and tomato. That uh, was in the third scene in the carousel of progress and the father has got a plate in front of him at the at the uh in the booth he's sitting at and it was bacon lettuce tomato sandwich and the plate and the sandwich had a bolt going all the way through it and through the table it was bolted and we know it had to have been unfortunately one of the employees took the sand managed to get the sandwich off they didn't take the plate but I thought, what well, you got a shredded fake sandwich? So I spent a whole week making 
separate tomatoes and bacon and lettuce and bread and then painting it all and then putting it all together and making it so it, it had to be exactly perfect so it looked real and then we both had well i went with one of the people from maintenance uh, animation maintenance and we put it in place bolted it to the table looked great i walked out in the audience and then i went oh <laughs> and it never occurred to me but you had to sit in the last two rows to be able to see the sandwich the first few rows could not because of the angle you're looking up they can't see the sandwich at all and the further back you go you can't tell all the work that went into it i even painted the seeds and the tomatoes and stuff it was it was absolutely crazy but a lot of fun so if you ever uh, get together with us and you want to have a bacon lettuce tomato be careful how i fix it um <laughs> it may not be edible <laughs> oh god okay i have a weird sense of humor um i am oh, i'm turning that light back on i have backlight i'm sitting oh there's our books look at that i'm talking and there's two of our, our books right there Okay, everybody, this has been uh, absolute so much fun, and it's nice to be back uh, and have a laptop that's working, a new one. <laughs> I think it was part of our problem is that one that I had actually had been a floor model, and we got a good deal on it. It uh, wasn't such a good deal because it died quicker. So anyway, uh, hi, Debbie, and uh, goodbye, Debbie. I'm getting ready to go. Uh, everybody have a great weekend stay cool I, I know some of you are in some really hot weather and some are in areas there's a lot of fires and everything else and then, gee I wish we could get more news on what happened with the uh, volcano in Hawaii I guess it died down they just stopped talking about it but um, anyway everybody have a great weekend be on next week with Jim Martin it's gonna be a lot of fun Tell your friends, come join us. Um, um, oh, uh, Trace, thank you. Love your stories. Looking forward to getting the books and painting. Yes, they're, they're right. You're getting both. And by the way, yes, everybody, we are now going to be uh, able to autograph books. You can buy them directly from us. So message me if you are interested, um, and we can do we can do that. Yay um so we're very happy about that uh and thank you larry uh having me back in action love watching and listening i like listening to myself too <laughs> and jeff another great session yeah okay <laughs> on that note everybody have a great one i will show uh of course uh you'll be able to see your pain <laughs> before everybody else when I finish it I, this should be done on Monday so uh, and I'll be working on another piece uh, actually I'm working on a stretch room painting next another one uh, and then I'm working on I believe the next one is uh, a wedding painting in front of the castle so everybody's in line if you're interested in a painting message me I'll be happy to give you uh, pricing on stuff and how it works and how I break the prices down uh, and how the payments go everything else so take care I'm gonna go have some uh, cold coffee <laughs> in my Disney University mug bye everybody <laughs>